Back in the 1970s, I was this enthusiastic psychology major in college, and I was trying to figure out what I believed and why I believed the things that I did, and so I would read various kinds of things. And I came across a book by Carl Menninger, and he's kind of a pioneer in psychiatry and psychology. And in his book, Dr. Menninger used the term groupthink. And, and as soon as I saw that word, it's like a little light bulb went off with me. It's like, oh, I can so relate to what he's talking about. I, actually, there was another psychologist named Irving Janis who popularized that word, groupthink. Now, is that something that you can relate to? Just, just the word alone. You know, when we talk about groupthink, we talk about having pressure to conform to a group's biases. And it's done in such a way that inhibits creative and independent and out of the box kind of thinking. And especially groupthink will discourage dissent. It discourages differentness. Does that sound very familiar to you? Now, when I was a teenager, um, of course, as teens, uh, you had your social circles that you were running around with, and, and uh, adolescence uh, uh, gives you exposure to a whole lot of groupthink. If you want to be popular, if you want to be somebody that's liked and known, you have to be like this, you have to wear your hair this way. Unfortunately, the groupthink that would come in a social setting might differ from the groupthink uh, that might be in a family setting. Uh, for example, when I was a teenager and a college kid, you know, back then the kids wore their hair long and, and the group think inside the Carter family was, you don't do that. The group think with my peers was, yeah, let's do that. And so you had to try to figure out which way you're going to go with that. In social circles, you can have a form of group think. Here's the way we do things. And if you want to be one of us, this is what you need to be and do yourself. Strongly in religious groups, there can be a, a group think. Here's what we believe. These are our adherents. These are our doctrines, and you must stay on the inside of it. And frankly, I'm not opposed to having beliefs and doctrines, but actually just to kind of chase a little rabbit uh, with respect to spirituality, I, I see it less of a belief system and more of a mindset, a, a worldview, if you will, a, a way of life. Uh, but there's some people inside religious systems like, nope, here's the way it's supposed to be, and you can't have any kind of thought that's going to be different. We frown on that greatly. Or I mentioned family systems just a minute ago, particularly when you have uh, times where we're supposed to be gathering together and holidays and all like that. There's a group think, and typically there's somebody that's running the show, and you feel like you have to go in line just to go out and keep everybody else appeased. Work settings, I've had many comments from you, uh, who, uh, from people who've had bosses and, and, uh, coworkers. It's like, here's the way we do things around here. And if you come along and say, well, I have a different idea, it's like, well, then <laughs> knock it off, quit it. Groupthink sets up the potential for abuse where a, a person can be scorned simply for being not the same, simply for being different. And I want to see if we can zero in on certain key elements that are a part of groupthink. I want you to have a, an awareness of what you're up against. And then let's see if we can come up with something that might be a little bit more palatable. When we talk about groupthink, uh, immediately what we're referring to is an authoritarian-based style of doing life. Uh, there, uh, typically, when you're inside groupthink, there's kind of this mentality that says, here's the way it is according to what? Well, the authority. Well, who's the authority? Sometimes it's just me, and uh, other times it's the system or it's our beliefs. But in groupthink, there's quite a bit of what I refer to as imperative thinking. Remember when you, back in your grammar school days, an imperative is very directive, cut and dry, black and white, have to, must, can't, should, supposed to. Does any of that sound familiar? Do you feel like there are just some systems and some groups that operate with that strong authoritarian imperative must have to way of living? That's groupthink. In group, groupthink, another ingredient, diversity is frowned upon. When, when you're inside that system, there's little effort gone, that's gone, that goes into the uh, questioning of somebody else's separate ideas. Well, what do you think about that? Or uh, I've got a, a, a an interpretation, but what's yours? You tend not to hear that kind of thinking or that kind of uh, communication inside groupthink. Uh, in, instead, there's kind of a closed-minded system. Well, we already know what we need to know. 
why would we need to get, uh, get confused by somebody else's notions? Uh, you know, what am I going to learn from those people over there? In addition, inside groupthink, non-conforming people are deemed wrong. Not different, wrong. They're deemed as other, and in the, in the use of that word, that's not a good word, at least for them. Or they're deemed as ungrateful. All the things we do for you, and then you dare to have a different thought. You're ungrateful. Or they're deemed as misinformed. It's like, <laughs> you just don't know. Or unenlightened. And so there's a scorn, there's a judgment that comes along with it. And then, of course, when you have groupthink, there's a great deal of pressure uh, that's used to keep people in line. You can be scolded, uh, creative uh, uh, communication is is not, is frowned upon. Uh, when uh, when uh, you show yourself to be different, you can be shamed. You might be shunned. There might be punitive measures. Uh, those kinds of things can happen. And the result is there's a suppressed creativity. There's a lot of suppressed emotion, especially anger, and you find yourself being calculated and guarded and cal and uh, and, and uh, you know, having to figure out, you know, what am I supposed to say in this to this person, not that person? Uh, dissonance. Uh, there's a dissonance between your public self and your private self. It sets up a two-faced way of living and being. It doesn't lead to good things at all. Now, I'm guessing as I'm talking about this, you're probably going through multiple uh, scenarios in your mind about, you know, people who go into group think and insist on that and various kind of systems that you've been in. And so I want to ask the question, how are we going to respond to this in such a way where we don't get caught up in all of the dysfunction that is required in group think? Well, let me offer a few suggestions. First, don't apologize for being a curious person. Be willing to ask questions. You know, why do we do it this way? Why not that way? And when someone says, well, I don't like that, it's like, okay, I, I understand you don't like that, but I, I have curiosity anyway. What's on the other side of that fence, fence that you're trying to wreck around me? Uh, what's going on out there? Be a curious person. Uh, I actually like to read books or uh, look at um, videos and things of that nature from, pe from the vantage point of people that I don't agree with. Uh, and it's not so that I can figure out how to you know, squash them, but I, I want to know. Yeah, I have certain beliefs, but why do other people believe differently? I think it's good to have curiosity. I want to keep my mind in an expanded kind of way. Who knows? <laughs> you might learn something. I might learn something. A second thought. Don't assume that doubt is a bad thing. You know, when you're inside groupthink, uh, it's like, well, I, I just got some doubts about these people. Sometimes I have doubts about myself. Well, basically what you're doing is, is you're, you're rubbing against the black and white thinking that's there in front of you. And your doubt is kind of your mind's way of saying, maybe there's more gray in this world than these other folks are uh, letting on. I wonder what happens if you live inside the gray. And, and let's see, you can go a little bit further. Be wary of the person whose favorite phrase seems to be, I know. Well, nobody knows everything, and that's okay. Uh, I, I like uh, just knowing that uh, maybe there's something bigger going on here than just me and my little way of thinking. And if I have doubts, it just means, well, in my mind, that it's, it's my mind's way of saying maybe there's something more. I'd, I'd like to remain open to it. Uh, another thought. And that is refrain from point counterpoint arguments with people inside the group think. Uh, you can state your thoughts and your feelings and your interpretations. And then inevitably when you're in that group, uh, someone may come along and say, well, let me explain to you why that's completely wrong. All right. You know what? <laughs> I don't feel the need to get sucked into point counterpoint because it's not going to go anywhere good. Be what you are, state what needs to be stated, and let that be enough. Uh, you, you're, you're not gonna, you're not likely to change people inside the group thing, but allow yourself to be your own independent, uh, distinct person. Number four, um, allow common sense to override loyalty. Now, let, let's be careful here. I like loyalty. Um, but sometimes when people imply that you have to be loyal to our religious group, our work style, our family, loyalty is kind of a cover up for obligation or duty. 
It's good to have loyalty in the sense that you're reliable and you're a team player and you want to blend well. I'm all for harmonizing, uh, but not at the, at the expense, of, expense of having to park my brain at the back door whenever I walk in there. Uh, sometimes common sense says, you know, the, the, the way the group is requiring me to live doesn't um, uh, add up to the way that I think, and I'm going to go ahead and allow myself to have my common sense and act upon it. And then finally, we can say, resist calmly other people's attempts to coerce you. Inevitably, groupthink uh, leads to a lot of coercive kind of thinking and communication, and people are going to come at you with, uh, what's wrong with you? Why do you have to be that way? Um, and basically, that just, to me, reveals their insecurity. It's like, I can't, I can't deal with it when people think differently from me. Uh, if others want to coerce you, that's on them. And you don't have to coerce in your response back. You don't have to convince them as they're trying to convince you. Just let it be known. I know that you and I think differently. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the way that I believe is wise. So I strongly suspect that you can look at some systems that are full of this group thing. And let's, let's close by saying, not only is it okay to be you, it's necessary to be you. Variety is built into all of creation, including human nature. And so let's celebrate variety. Let's have common sense. Let's have a sense of harmonizing, but let's do so with the understanding that if someone thinks differently, if you think differently, uh, we can uh, approach that by asking, how might I learn from this? That sound reasonable? I do hope that you get some benefit from videos such as this. If you've not done so, go down below and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'm going to be uh, picking up more on the Dr. Les Carter channel. Some of you have, have commented about it. I've been a little uh, amiss in terms of uh, putting uh, videos on here, but we're going to be doing more. I've got my Surviving Narcissism channel, as uh, many of you know, and I'm going to keep doing that. Um, if uh, if you'd be interested, I have the Dr. Les Carter website, and we also have the Surviving Narcissism.tv website. If you'd be interested in uh, getting some online professional assistance, uh, and in this day and age, people are, are looking online for a lot of that. We have a link below that would help, uh, that would uh, link you with licensed professional counselors that can help you. And in addition, we have links to my books, my online workshops, and even coffee mugs. Thanks for letting me be a part of your journey. Uh, be you and allow yourself to be uh, your own independent person. I'm hoping that's not going to be too high of a risk uh, for us to suggest that, don't you think?